We've got a very fun golf ball test today. We've got a brand new fresh box of the Titleist Professional 90s, which was one of the most popular golf ball choices pre-Pro V1 era. And of course, we've got the brand new Titleist Pro V1 for 2021. We're going to compare them with TrackMan and show you the differences. That's Pro V, That's yeah, Pro -V. sure. <laughs> Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. And today we've got a fun, unique test. Uh, we have a box of brand new, fresh Titleist Professional 90 golf balls uh, with us today. We're going to test them with the brand new 2021 Pro V1. So, uh, Thomas, there's a lot of differences here uh, between these two golf balls. The construction methods have changed drastically over 20 years, and the Pro V1 introduced in 2000 was really the big first step into this new era of golf ball. So I'm sure we're going to see some significant differences here. Yeah, you mentioned significant differences. The first thing I'm going to talk about is going to be feel. Mm -hmm. Golfers, they love feel. They talk about feel when they're hitting different irons, different wedges, and different driver. Well, I can tell you the feel is going to be very different with the professional versus the Pro V1, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a little firmer these days with the Pro V1 versus the professional. Yep, and so the, I mean, these golf balls prior to the Pro V1 era, you know, that wound construction inside, that balata like feel, some of them were even liquid filled. So there's a lot of differences going on now, and of course, a lot uh, more you know, firm, and uh, like you said, there's going to be a different feedback. So, uh, but now we can, of course, it's not just about feel, but performance. It's not a coincidence that, you know, as soon as people started putting in Pro V1 in the 2000s, you know, distance went up, but also scores dropped, and the players that put the ball in right away were able to win more consistently. So, uh, track bench should show us uh, some major differences, I think. Yeah, I think we're going to see some differences in spin. We're going to see some distance in ball speed and obviously total distance is going to be where it's at. Mm -hmm. And so we've got, you know, a wedge, we've got a seven iron, we've got a driver. We're going to see the differences with all three clubs, uh, kind of show you the whole spectrum of the bag here. Thomas to get some shots. We're going to get some feedback and we're going to show you guys the differences here. So uh, Thomas, you ready to get after it? Let's do it. Thomas, that was you know the first ten shots of our test. Uh, five with each golf ball with a wedge, fifty-six degree wedge. Um, honestly, the data numbers aren't super different, but I know you commented several times during the hitting about the feel. Yeah, the professional ninety did not feel very good off the club face. It, it felt like it felt really soft, too soft, too mushy. Felt like rubber bands were breaking mm -hmm. uh, as I was kind of hitting, and that was just kind of like with a wedge. Right. I'd also say, even after hitting five shots with this, before we test the next round with a seven iron driver, for durability purposes, we might even need to maybe consider yeah, a uh, newer golf. But I know it's only five shots with a wedge, but what's going to happen is this thing's going to get torn up pretty fast. And I can see already some, yeah. some cut marks on this professional mm -hmm. versus the Pro V1, which is still looks mint or a new yeah. condition. So mm -hmm. that's one thing I kind of noticed. And then feel, well, I like to do like a, a feel test. Uh, I like to just kind of bounce the golf ball on, on the mm -hmm. golf club. So I'm going to first off start off bouncing the Pro V1. So for me, it sounds like it's a little firmer. I'm going to now bounce the Professional. And it's mm -hmm. almost like it's a little clicky with yeah. the Professional, where the Pro V1 is just a very consistent firm yeah, sound. It's like a, um, it's, there's a different pitch for sure. Uh, and I don't have the feel uh, obviously, but there's a different pitch to it as well. And interesting that, you know, and now we can quickly bring this up the data wise here, but I can, I mean, there's your circles. And so, I mean, if we bring up, we can talk about the, the data as well. And there's nothing drastically different here in terms of the wedge performance. It's kind of interesting. I would have maybe expected maybe different spin or um, height numbers, but it's pretty similar. So, um, but I'm imagining that'll change here as we move up to 7 iron. Yeah, it was about 200 RPMs more spin with the professional. I will say, now, this is always going to be player dependent based on whether you're keeping that club face square or not. But I, I will say that the dispersion pattern was a little bit tighter mm -hmm. with the Pro V1 versus the professional. Sure, sure. That's so. important to note. But all right, let's, uh, let's hit 7 iron. All right. I will say that felt solid. Felt, felt solid. very solid off the club face. Yeah. 
I'm going to guess this is not going to feel <laughs> quite as solid. I would, you know, that's probably a correct hypothesis to have. <laughs> Okay, so Thomas, 10 shots with the 7 iron, 5 each. A um, couple of big differences. I mean, you, you got this draw going today, but a um, couple of big differences there in the data. So the first thing I could see was the height. So the professional actually threw about 14 feet lower mm -hmm. than the uh, Pro V1 did. And I was actually swinging the Pro V1 when I was swinging, hitting the golf shots just a little bit faster as well. It was about half a mile an hour faster. So generally you'd say, oh, if you're swinging faster, you'd even hit it higher. Didn't actually flew a lot lower. So yeah. that was kind of the, the big difference. So I was trying to swing about the same, but within, within about half a mile an hour yeah. with club speed. We could definitely see the spin rate as well was significantly higher. We're talking about 700 RPMs, more spin with the Titus Professional versus the Pro V1. Mm -hmm. So interesting that we had more swing speed and 700, 800 RPM or more RPM a spin, yet the Pro V1 is flying higher. Yeah. And one thing to note too now, in comparison to the Pro V1X, the Pro V1 is supposed to fly a little bit lower than that even. So interesting there that you know, you're getting a lower ball flight with that Pro, uh, Professional 90, despite all these data points that would suggest you should be hitting it higher. Yeah, and I was also swinging half a mile an hour faster when I was hitting the Professional, plus the ball was going seven yards shorter so the Pro V1, normally my carry distance is right around about 180 yards with my mm -hmm. 7 iron. Well, you can see when if we look at the, the carry distance at 180.8 on average, the professional 90 was 173.9. Now I'm no mathematician, I don't know what percentage that is, yeah. but it's definitely, you know, it's about a half a club to almost a club for some players that you're going to see in distance just by obviously playing the newer technology. Now this yeah. is a extreme circumstance because we know that the professional is quite far outdated yeah. these days but it's also a fun test to see how far technology has come yeah it's just it's interesting the way the ball is getting to these spots you know the way the, the pro v1 ball gets to 180 yards of carry uh, it's a it's penetrating flight but it's also higher which is kind of weird and then the professional 90 is spinning so much more but still flying lower it's just it's just you don't you don't anticipate that being the trend but um, so, I mean, yeah, I'm really curious now about driver too when we get to that. Yeah, but right before we do that, I do want to also talk about consistency on the 7 iron. When I was hitting the Pro V1, take a look at those plus or minus numbers. So if we take a look at the spin rate over here a little bit further, we'll notice the plus or minus number was plus one, minus 145. With the professional, it was plus or minus 342. With the carry distance, you'll notice plus or minus 1.8 versus 3.7. Now, as a better golfer, I'm going to want a golf ball that's going to be more consistent every single time. That's also important to me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and your Pro V1 dispersion now with both clubs has been tighter than the one for Pro Professional 90. So consistency is certainly there. I mean, the advantage Pro V1 as you would expect. But all right, uh, time to hit some bombs. That's helping hit some bombs. We'll see if the professional can keep up or not. I doubt it. Oh, that was a weird noise. Did you break the ball? Did this thing break? You <laughs> might no. have broken the ball. That sounded like... <laughs> no, it's, a, it's one Is piece. it intact? It's intact. All right, it's we're perfectly doing... round. <laughs> there we go. Straightest one I've hit yet. That is a... I mean, that's a good swing. <laughs> Noticeably higher spin. Yeah. That's what this ball was designed to do, though. Remember on the box it says? It says on the box, yeah. Higher spin. Driver spin. Highest, not just highest. higher, highest. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the Pro V1 box it says long game spin, very low. <laughs> so <laughs> there's, your, there's your differences. That was smoked. It's, it, it's, it's working hard to get there. I mean, that was, that's as good as you're probably going to get in terms of the efficiency out of the professional 90 there. 148. 148. Smash and then spin in me close to that sweet spot. That's pretty good. That was yeah, that was a good spot. Better than I would have expected any shot to be from, from that ball today. So interesting that it was really the spin driving things with the professional ninety that was the big difference because I think the height was 
more or less similar, I think. Uh, it was just a spin made a few of those professional 90 shots just kind of, you know, drift into the air a little too high. And of course, on a windy day, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, I mean, the highest spin rate, I think, was around about 3,000 with the professional. I think the highest was maybe 24, 2,500 with the Pro V1. You can see my best shot with the professional didn't even keep up with my worst mm -hmm. shot with, uh, with, yeah. the, with the Pro V1 there. And that's just the ball speed. My club speed was exact, exact same sa there, 111.8 with both of them. Um, I lost 4.4 miles an hour of ball speed. Uh, and then the spin rate was, we're talking, what was that, 600 RPMs yep. more mm -hmm. with the professional? And that's why it, we, we lost distance. I mean, spin is king in, in a lot of fittings. Ball speed's pretty, far, pretty close there as well. So when I'm fitting, I'm always looking at ball speed, I'm always looking at spin rate and trying to optimize those. Uh, the height, yeah, you can see the height. You know, I do hit up on the ball pretty, pretty high right now. Mm -hmm. This driver is actually set at eight degrees too. So even still, I mean, I'm, I'm hitting the ball very high, but I want to hit the ball high, but I want to keep that spin rate down. Yeah. And the professional, you would notice, I lost, what is it? Uh, we're talking 22 yards? Yeah. yeah. Total, total distance, that's 22 yards, and you're about 15, 16, 17 yards of carry distance as well. So um, interesting, you know, I mean, it's kind of what we expected. And I, now I wanted to get your opinion on the sound and feel too, because um, I had an immediate reaction to the sound. <laughs> Uh, yeah. it's just completely different. So, I mean, in terms of feel, was there anything super different? Well, you weren't hitting it, but you could definitely sound as it, it took off. It was like this, I, I, I don't, you explain it. Yeah, Cause it was, it was a weird sound. Yeah. I'll talk about the feel a little bit, but it just felt like mush off the face. Yeah. Felt soft, not explosive at all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I'm, I'm used to hearing, you know, a powerful thud with tee shots in here. This one, it almost had like a, a whistling to it, a shrieking whistle to it. Um, it was, it, it, I don't, I don't know what happened. I thought you broke the ball at first. Uh, and so it's kind of like, you know, when you get that cracked range ball and you hit it and you kind of get that little whistle out of it, it yeah. sounded like that, but the ball is intact. We need close inspection. Yeah. I had uh, to take a look at the first <laughs> drive to see, yeah, it's, yeah, it's still close intact. inspection, yeah. still intact. And yeah. I mean, it, it was flying relatively straight. It was just the fluctuation in the spin and, and the height was kind of the issue that wouldn't really work out very well on the golf course. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a big difference. I, I, I mean, I don't know what we picked up 22 yards and I was hitting about 314. Uh, that's, mm. I don't know, 10%, 8%. I don't know. I don't know math. <laughs> well, but it's, it's, significant say, it's a significant it difference yeah. with regards to technology changes. And that's just, that's just golf ball. Yeah. We've done a lot of equipment testing, club head tests as well. Yeah. Now keep in mind that golf ball, it was designed probably more or less for the, the drivers <laughs> back in the late 90s yeah. um, to, to play that particular, to particular club. If we were going to do uh, that particular club with the professional versus oh, yeah. 2021 driver with the Pro V1, I think we'd probably see maybe even more of yeah, a difference probably. there too and, take, and changes it. And that's actually another one we could probably do. Yeah, yeah. and that's also you know, a comment on the, the sound and feel too. It's probably you know, the golf ball matches up well with like a 200 cc titanium driver maybe a persimmon driver back in the day yeah um that was being used for these golf balls but you know the big takeaway to me is so you're you're when you're trying to score hitting wedges you know short irons dispersion was tighter and more predictable i think with the pro v1 which i didn't really anticipate a dispersion like pattern to be tighter i guess th for this um but then, durability would be the well durability yes would be the issue and with then, the wedges and then when you're talking long game the big difference was spin and distance so again i'm gonna but the packaging says it you know the professional 90 box driver spin highest titleist pro v1 long game spin very low so that it lives up to what they what they advertise so it's yeah. it's, it's this fun though it's fun to look back and see how the equipment has changed over over 20 years now yeah this a, it was an interesting test um i did play the professional back when i was growing up i was a young kid I remember having to switch out golf balls every six to nine holes, especially <laughs> if I caught one maybe a little bit thin out of the bunker or even just a, see a, that a, scuff a on there. Out, see that scuff? <laughs> had to basically throw it in the pond and then move on to the <laughs> next one. So it was definitely more expensive back in the day because you had to replace the golf ball sure. more often. Sure. Yeah. Well, today we've got Pro V1s and Pro V1Xs that are a little more durable and really any, any premium ball. Uh, it's, it's a, they're, the advancements are significant. And uh, you can see that here. So uh, golfers, thanks for watching for one. And Thomas, thank you for hitting all the shots today.
giving us a breakdown. This was this is really fun to look at.